It was the day after a big snowstorm in 22 days since one of my two best friends, Choi James Jr., was shot and killed by the local police. He was one of six people who have been shot and killed by them just in the past six months alone. Jason McKee is my other friend, and my name is Michael Lofton. This is a story of how my death and my friend Jason's letter changed the lives of everyone in our town, so my death was not in vain. It may have possibly guaranteed a future for the men, women, and especially the young boys and girls who live here. It's still really painful to think about, so I will begin my story after little Troy was killed. I always knew that most of the folks in our town were actually really good people and to see that my friend's death has caused many of them from all races and religions to finally say enough is enough confirms it. Welcome back to Logic Nonsense on SoundWavesRadio.com, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, we're talking about the craziness of all these police shootings of, you know, our black men by the, the folks that are supposed to be protecting us, but clearly they're doing the opposite. And it's like, where, what's the solution? What, what are we going to do? In a town this small, man, the, the, the numbers per capita, it's like we getting murdered one for one. What the hell? I agree. Yeah, they're gonna have to bring in whole new leadership, right? New directors, new new training protocols. Like you were speaking on earlier, man, they just gonna have to wipe the whole slate clean because you're building a mistrust between the community and the police. Absolutely. Man. The father of the latest police shooting victim has finally broken his silence. News 39 reporter Ryan Legler is on location in the Haddon Heights section of the city to report. That's Troy James Sr. He left town right after Little Troy was shot. This is the first time he's spoken about his son's death. Good evening. I'm Ryan Legler, reporting live from KPKZ News. I'm here with yet another grieving parent whose child was gunned down in another police shooting of an unarmed local resident. Mr. James, is there anything you would like to say on behalf of your son and the other victims? He killed my son. My 12-year-old son. He didn't pose a threat to anyone. He was just a child. And thanks to you guys in the media, the cops are blaming him for his own death. But you know what's worse is that if we all came together as one, no matter race or religion, and stand it against this and said that we're not going to go for it anymore, it would stop just like that. But that's not going to happen. You know why? Because the level of hatred is too deep-seated. Why do you hate me? Why do you hate my son? He didn't do anything. Mom, did they kill his son? He didn't have a weapon. He's nobody to be feared. Yes, baby. Every, I'm sick of turning on the news. I can't deal with this anymore, man. Something's got to be done. I've been watching this for months. Now I'm living it? What did Troy James Jr. do to anybody? He didn't even have a gun. You want a target? I'll give you a target. Point a gun at me. You point a gun at my son. Point a gun at me. I will give you something to shoot. This is the fourth such shooting we've had this year, and we're only halfway into the year. Reporting live from Haddington Tides, I'm Ryan Legler. Back to you in the studio, Jennifer. Thanks, Ryan. In other news, one of the oldest buildings in our town. Kevin. Are the police going to kill you, too? I don't think so, because I'm biracial. If it wasn't your uncle, I'd let you keep thinking that. The truth of the matter is, it doesn't matter what you're mixed with, you are black. Or at least a minority in the eyes of the people in America. Boy, don't you ever forget that. That's Mr. Pratoli, but everyone in school calls him Principal Pratt. I think it might be a good idea if we all started paying more attention to our students 
and what's really happened in this community. I agree with that 100%. I think it's safe to say that we've all been looking the wrong way around here long enough, don't you? I know you're not asking me that question. Look, black people in this community have been complaining about the police for as long as I can remember. And to be honest with you all, I'm a little shocked. I'm shocked that it took us this long to actually have this conversation. And don't get me wrong, it's refreshing. In fact, it's so refreshing, I think we should continue this conversation over some drinks after work. Well, I'll tell you what, the first round's on me. <laughs> I got the second. I'm along for the ride. Sounds good. Okay. I'll meet you there. All right. Good. Hey, Cindy, how are you? Hey, is he in? Yes, he is. Excuse me. Principal Pratt, do you have a minute? Yes, Miss Norwood, of course. Come in, what can I do for you? Well, I was talking to some of the other teachers about the changes in many of the students' behavior since the shooting death of Troy James Jr. And many of them are really good kids. I see. Well, does this have anything to do with the detentions I imposed on your students? Actually, it does. <clears throat> but please, hear me out. Go ahead, I'm listening. First of all, many of these kids are, that are acting out are some of our best students. So it's obvious that the town's reaction to the young man's death is the sole reason for the behavior. Well, Ms. Norwood, I agree with everything you just said, and it's abundantly clear that these kids are rebelling against everybody in town, including the teachers, which is why I've asked some of the parents to come in and sit in these detentions. Um, oh, come on in, Miss Gordon. Hi, Hi Principal Pratt. Hi, Cindy. How's everybody? Good. So I guess you've had a chance to talk to other teachers already. Yes, and I also got an email from Miss Strickland, and there is uh, something a little strange in it, that one of our students had suggested that we segregate the town in order to prevent these shootings. I'm not sure if that's what she meant. But I did give her the go ahead to allow the parents to attend her noon detentions, which by the way, I instructed my new assistant to do the same for everybody. Oh my goodness, I am so glad to hear that you're not opposed to this. <laughs> opposed? Actually, I'm 100% behind it. I see, I came in at the right time, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> I'm shocked, but I'm happy to see your passion about this. Well, unfortunately, I was one of several that uh, sort of dismissed these police shootings. But this is the last straw. Well, we definitely need to have your voice on this issue. Oh, thank you, Miss Gordon. It's just that. Uh, I'm just sorry that it took me so long to see the light. Well, better late than never. Amen to that. Thanks for your time, guys. So, Principal Pratt, I wanted to talk to you about the students and their... These are some of the head members of our local city government. It is their final response to my friend Jason's letter that will lead to changes on our police force that are long overdue. Little Troy's death has put each of them back in the political spotlight, but for all the wrong reasons. That's Miss Samantha. They call her Sammy. And she's been friends with Jason's Uncle T ever since they were in college. Hey, this is Sammy, city manager. Got to... That's Mr. McCauley. He's the head councilman. He's okay sometimes, I guess. Yes, tonight is, it's a big deal. It's about the cop shooting. Yeah, I know it's a terrible thing. We're working on it. That's Mr. Norris and Mr. Mendez. Mr. Norris is known for fighting really hard for the people here. Good luck with the whole civil rights fight movement. But Mr. Mendez is known as a sellout. His own family doesn't even speak to him anymore. Yeah, no, now I'm here. This is a very important thing that's taking place. Now I'm gonna call him later on. That's Mr. Jax. He's a really good man. He supports all of the youth programs here in our community. And the senseless violence that's been going on with these officers and the youth. The principal thought some of the kids overreacted when little Troy was killed, so we got two days detention. 
Some of the kids got really crazy, so their parents were asked to sit in on class. That's my mom and my sister Kayla. All right, guys. Look, you're in detention for a reason. And that's me. And that's Jason. Obviously, we have visitors here. Some of you know who they are. This is not the traditional way we run things here. This is not how we run detentions. But I called them here. I asked them to be here because I believe in you. Rather than suspending you, because that would be the next step. Hand me the phone, please. Is your mom here? Excuse me. Turn around. I need the phone. He texts back. <gasps> for oh my God. Right. No, don't take the phone. Don't take the phone. Okay. All right. You gotta touch it. You gotta touch it. I want to do Ice cold. Spit it out. Spit it out. Dang, you always on her case. Spit it out. Spit it out now. And you don't understand the same thing at all. Put it away. I'm not going I'm good. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm perfectly fine. Everything's good at home? Everything's perfect. You know you can come talk to me anytime, right? I know. Okay. All right. You have a good day. I'll see you tomorrow. You too. You too. Okay. Don't forget your homework assignment for tonight, and I will see you all tomorrow. Like I'm doing anyway. Okay. Okay. I'm Jason. Can I speak with you, Mom? Yes, Mr. Shiffen? Listen, I just wanted to congratulate you once again for, for picking such an important topic and for writing such a powerful letter for your class assignment. But you do know that this is only a class project, right? Yeah, but my uncle is going to get me in front of the city council so that I can help the cops from killing people. Okay, but if I were you, I wouldn't get my hopes up for that happening. And if by some crazy chance it does happen, I just wouldn't put too much faith in them for taking the suggestions you put in your letter seriously. It is rather extreme, you know? Yes, ma'am. You have a good evening, and I'll see you tomorrow. That's little Troy's mom. Miss Maddie, as you might expect, she's still pretty shaken up about his death. Hey, man. Hey. I wanted to come by and bring some of the stuff that you wanted from Troy's room. I thought you were going to do that two weeks ago before you disappeared. I was going to, but then I couldn't. It's, it's a long story. I'll explain later. That's OK. Just put it in the front seat. So I saw you on the news talking about a little try. Yeah, the media has been trying to get me to do a interview for a while now. I just couldn't at the time because it was all still too new. Believe me, I know. I've been getting blown up by local and some national news outlets trying to get me to 
give an interview, but I'm just not ready to talk about it. And plus, I ain't no telling what's gonna come out of my mouth right now. Trust me. Guess I kind of lost it talking to that, uh, that reporter the other day. Yeah, you did. Troy, you know, I know you're hurting over his death, but there's a part of me that just think that he might still be here if it wasn't for you being so focused on football, being a role model for everybody else's kids and the fans Maddie, and all that. Tell me you're joking, right? I know you're joking, right? I'm sorry, it's just that I just can't believe that he's gone. Every day it's just, I just can't believe he's just gone forever. And it hurts so bad. Trust me, it's killing me to know that this is not just some dream that we could wake up from. That, that this is our reality. I would give every dime in my pocket and all this fame to bring my boy back. I know this. It's just, the irony is I was just speaking on behalf of the police. It says four days before they killed our son. Then I'm just so mad. This doesn't make sense. He was the most harmless and sweet boy you'll ever meet. Makes no sense. Actually, that makes perfect sense. Me being a pro athlete, making all this money, it prevented us from seeing that they are hunting these young boys. And we lost our son in the process. You're so right. I shouldn't have said what I said. I'm just. Well, I gotta go pick up Madison from school. Her teacher's been calling, been on and off, just crying so much. And, you know, she misses her big brother. She idolized him so much. No. You want me to go get her? No. I told her I'd, I'll pick her up and I'm gonna surprise her and try to. Cheer up, buy some dresses for her. Well, let my baby know that I will be there to come get her this weekend. And trust me, she loves her daddy. She's not gonna let me forget. Why don't we all go do something this weekend? The three of us. Call me. That's Jason's Uncle Tony and his Uncle Greg. He got a lot of famous people together to speak out against locking up people for money. It is much of a system of profit. Through the legal and prison industrial system. The practice of imprisoning for profit is destroying families and communities by the millions at the taxpayers' expense. The prodigal child has returned. Where you been at? See? You just know getting Just came from school. Mm, about to put well, on the trash. Yeah, I was gonna say I gotta remind you what you gotta do. But uh oh, before you before you do that, I'm I gotta go there, man. While we all here, you know, this whole thing with you know, with your grandma is the kind of situation that uh, you know, I, I, gee, I gee. It's like it's like every time I get a chance to get ready to start going into it, gee, man, you know, gee. look. Why, why do we have to start this every day? All right, listen, okay, you, listen. I'm leaving, I, I, we don't need I, to I'm leaving alone for right now, because like I said, I, we got, I got to finish up this whole thing on this whole mass incarceration thing, because you know, it's, it's important to me, we got to get it done, but I told you, I think they should have wrote your paper on this. This is the subject I think you should have chose, but you know, you're going to do your thing, and it's too late for all of that. So. Actually, that's what I wanted to talk to Uncle T about. Oh, okay. Well, let me finish up with Uncle G, and I'll holler at you in a little bit. Okay, I'll be in my room. All right, cool. Oh, before you do that, Go see your grandmother, because she asked about you earlier. Okay. All right.
You know, see what I was telling you before was that like to use these people, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? These kind of people like that, we can just really be able to keep going back and forth. Like with the different like with the more national celebrities and the more Who's national prime figures and the local <laughs> Yeah, we definitely need local people. Yeah, no doubt. Because we got to make it feel like, you know, it the it same it conversation yeah. got to work. Blend with we relate all of yeah, exactly. so, so, so you got the, uh, you said T.D. Jakes? Yeah, and, uh, you know, Dr. Ben Chavis and people, uh -huh. Bernard Hopkins and people like that, you know. Right. So, and we got to release form for them to be the youth enough. images the and, the and, the ad and things like that, so. Join familiar faces against mass incarceration on Facebook and Twitter. We are in a battle for both ours and our children's future. But you can't expect to win if you're not in the fight. So please, 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 join us. Everybody, join with us today. We can't keep glossing over this issue right. and acting like it's not happening. Like the media and people like that are doing. So I really want to focus on that. Just like you know, you know what Jay want to focus on with this whole cop, this whole cop shooting thing. So, so we yeah we we'll be okay with it. Well, Jay, what's up, nephew? Mm -hmm. No, you're not too busy, fool. No, I'm not too busy. Come on in. <laughs> you know, I had to ask because, you know, saving the world takes a whole full time job. Come on, Uncle T. <laughs> so, what's up, man? What you want to talk about? Well, you know how they got all these cop shootings going around? And you know the cops are getting away with it. And we can't just keep sitting here doing nothing. Right. Well, I did some research and I found out that this kind of stuff has been going on since my mom was a little girl. Well, unfortunately, it's been going on a lot longer than that. It just was a way of life back then. Well... Okay, since all the marching and protesting hasn't been working, they keep letting these same cops out here to kill somebody else. We need to try to do something different. So I came up with an idea that I want to present to the city council. Okay. Your friend Mr. Samantha works down there. Right. It might not work for other places, but I know it'll work for around here. I wrote it all out on my classroom assignment. Wow. All I can say is wow. <laughs> so you came up with this all on your own? Yeah. Wow. I mean, I see where you're going with this. And Mama told you what happened to Uncle Terrell, right? Mm -hmm. So you know I'm 100% behind this. I don't know if Sam will uh, present this to the city council. Come on, Uncle T. Everything is in this letter. You see all the research I have to support what I'm saying? I just need to be able to at least present this to them. I mean, trust me, I hear you. But what I'm saying is, I'm not sure if she's going to let you present it. I mean, you're right, we got to do something, you know? I mean, what you're saying about here, you know, with, uh, with all the cops except the minorities in the community. I don't know. Come on, Uncle T, please. All right. I'll talk to her about it. All right? Thanks, Uncle T. Hey, don't thank me yet. We still got to get Sam on board. Yeah, no. You know what? Finish up your homework before it gets too dark. I'm going to call Sam and see if everything is cool, okay? Okay. All right. <laughs> hey, Uncle T. Hmm? Um, are you and Uncle G sure about bringing these people from the nursing home to... Come take care of my mom. Yeah. Yeah. Little Jay, unfortunately, your Uncle G and I don't know how to handle her losing her memory like that. You know, one minute she's talking about something that happened 40 years ago, and the next minute she can't remember a word she said. 
But it's all for the better. All right. But they're really nice people, though. You sure? I I'm sure. You know what? You can come with me. And then we'll make our final decision, okay? Yeah. You know what, little Jay? Just look it up. Always best care. Look at the reviews. They got a lot of good reviews. Okay? Okay. All right. Thanks again, Uncle T. Hey, you're welcome. Always Best Care has helped more than 25,000 seniors maintain higher levels of dignity and respect. And the number one way that clients judge us is by the quality of our care providers. So, we want only the best. That's Mr. Hector. He's one of Big Choi's best friends. They killed his son two years ago. His whole family came to town and almost caused a riot at one of the police stations. I'm just gonna just go one day at a time. And that's what you do, one day at a time? After what happened to both of your sons, how are the two of you able to go on? As time passes, think about the good times that you had together, what you and him meant to each other, because that's what I do. I have to live for my son because I want him to live through me. When they hear the name Eric Garner, the only way he's going to live through me is if I keep on lifting up his name. Mm -hmm. The good times, absolutely, and um, it's going to be hard, but know that you can do it. It's hard to go on, especially when you have other children that you have to be strong for, and sometimes you just don't want to even live yourself, but you know that your son will want you to have a voice for him, so that what keeps me going on. It seems like these, they're happening every week, and we forget. Another one. I don't want my yes. son to just be a hashtag. And don't let him be. Don't a let him be a hashtag. Yes. Don't let him. Don't let the lawyers tell you what to Absolutely. do. It's so hard. I just I, don't want to get up sometimes. I know. I've been there. Did that. Mm -hmm. Didn't want to comb my hair. Didn't want to brush my teeth. Mm -hmm. Just want to roll over and say, Lord, I don't want to wake up. Mm -hmm. We got to keep fighting. We got to keep saying our child's name. Mm -hmm. We have to try to make a difference. We have to galvanize. Mandy, where do you go from here? Honestly, I don't know. I don't know. I go to his room every day to look for him, and he's not there. But you go there as often as you feel that you need to. This is part of your healing. Hey, babe. Hey. I'm on my way to the hair salon, so call me if you want me to pick you up something to eat on the way back. Cool. Thank you, baby. Okay. I'll see you later. I okay. miss you. Miss you, too. What's up, Troy? I didn't even see you come up. Hey, don't sneak up on me like that again, man. What's going on, man? What's up, brother? Look, I'm sorry for coming over unannounced. Just wondering if you got time to talk. 
Sure, brother. What, what's on your mind? Yo, how you deal with what they did to your boy? First of all, I saw you on the news. And I felt every bit of your pain and anger. I feel you, man, but it's... It's hard to not think about wanting revenge. I understand, believe me. I mean, but here's reality. That's not gonna get your boy back. Look, I know. The voices, right? You hear voices beckoning you? Do it. And then what? Nothing. But believe me, it was the hardest thing in the world for me to see my sons killed. Just Walk free. But speaking about it at schools and other events helped me a lot. Every time I would talk about it to someone, it would ease the pain more and more each time. And I have to believe it'll do the same for you. It did kind of feel a little good the other night when I said that stuff on the news. Trust me when I tell you, I know what it's going to take to help you deal with it. I overheard Pam on the phone discussing a community meeting. You know, my, my sellout cousin's wife, you know, he's on the council. You want to go say a few words? I mean, I'm sure that we'll let you speak. Think so? Come on, man. It's your boy's death that caused the meeting to come about in the first place. I'll tell you what, I'll go down there with you. Yeah, okay. I'll come in, pick you up in the morning, and we can swing by and see if Maddie wants to go. Okay. That's good. Thanks, bro. Hey, come on, man. I got you. You all right? I'm gonna make a phone call. Good morning, Sammy Brooks. <laughs> Hello, is this Sammy Brooks, AKA the Freedom Fighter? <laughs> no, I know this isn't who I think it is. Is this Tony too smooth? The one and only. <laughs> hey, Tony, how you been? I've been good. I see you're not doing too bad yourself, Miss Queen of City Hall. Oh, come on now, darling. It's just a job. Yeah, I hear that. Mm. So, I haven't talked to you in years. What brings you to the surface? It's these police shooting, Sammy. Yeah. They have gotten pretty crazy. Yeah, crazy is an understatement. But the reason why I'm calling is about my 12-year-old nephew. Oh, your uh, sister Pam's son, the one you've been raising, right? Yeah. Just want to let you know, you know, he's one of the smartest kids you'll ever meet. But crazy as it may sound, he may have the solution to all these police shootings. No, but I need you to go down and talk to all those talking heads down there. Really? Because when you hear what this, what he has. You're not going to believe what he has in tail. And this is something that your nephew came up with? Yep, I was surprised myself when I read it. Hmm. Well, you got my attention. Um, looks like, uh, I'm free after three. Can you guys come down then? He should be out of school by then, right? 
okay, yeah, yeah, he, he's actually home now. You know, we could, I can get a ride, and we can just come on down. Okay, cool, well listen, it was good hearing from you. Surprising, but good hearing from you, okay? <laughs> Same here, Sammy. Right, I'll see you guys later today. Okay, thank you, Sammy. All right, bye. Mr. Kappa Man, please don't kill me. Cause I got my hands up, I'm not filthy. Oh yeah, Mr. Kappa Man. Yeah, plus I got some things I want to say to Sammy. For letting those people pull the budget on that program. So yeah, I'll drive y'all down there. I'll see you on the field. Alright, thank you. Meet today. Thanks, Uncle T. All right. Thanks but I want you, lot, but, but I want you there. So finish up what you're doing, and I'll meet you downstairs. Okay. So hurry up. Okay. So I thought that went well. Um, we just need to make sure that we're sending out the invites to City Hall. Okay, no problem. We have all the invites. Hey, Leanne. Inspecting uh, Tony and Jace. Oh, I'm sorry. He just got here. Joe, hey, you're a little early. Yeah, I had another meeting across the street, so I just came straight here. Okay, well listen, I've got a three o'clock that's gonna be coming in real soon. Can you do me a favor and just sit tight? No problem. Leanne, do me a favor, offer him something to drink. Sure, all right, I'll be right with you. You want some coffee or tea or something to drink? Nah, I'm fine, that's okay. okay. Yeah, they're fixing up his office. But can you tell him to keep the noise down? She has a meeting about to start. <laughs> oh, smooth tea. That's what they used to call your uncle back in the day. <laughs> You're still looking good after all these years, brother. Yep, that's that clean living. I wouldn't know nothing about that. Love me some wine. <laughs> that's right. What's going on, G-Man? I don't know. You tell me what's going on, Sammy. No. Oh, I know you're not still mad at me about what happened after all these years. Why, shouldn't I be? No. Not at all. Hey, Tony, listen, I'll be out in the car. I'm waiting for y'all. I can't believe he's still mad. Come on, Sammy. You know how long he holds grudges. Nothing has changed. Yeah, I see. Don't even sweat it. Trust me, I'm not. So, Jason, the young man with the master plan, right? Yes, ma'am, I guess so. Ma'am, hmm, I like your manners already. And what do you mean, you guess so? You better know so if you want to make a difference. Ma'am, I know for sure that I want to help stop these killings from happening. That's what I'm talking about. Now I'm a little bit more convinced. So, what is it that you've come up with, and how can I help you? Well, my uncle is always talking about how you make things happen, and that you can get me in front of the city council so I can read them my petition letter. That I think can help stop the cops from killing people. Well, that depends on what you have to say, and is it worth listening to? Well, ma'am. You know what? Let me see your letters. What we'll do is we'll let Sam read the letters, and we'll go and get a soda, okay? All right? Sounds good. All I can say is, uh, I'm impressed. You came up with this on your own? Yes, ma'am. Mm. Started off as a school project, but then it became personal when one of his friends was murdered last month by the police. You know that was uh, Troy James' boy, right? Mm. Why that dude is crazy about his kids? Yeah, especially that little one. His family had to practically drug him up to get him out of town. And you know what he's capable of, and he wouldn't have cared one bit if he died in the process. Oh, wow. 
Well, I'm sure we haven't seen the last of that situation. Yeah. But I tell you what, I'm feeling where you're coming from in this letter, young man. You know what part jumped out at me, right? Hey, believe me, when I read it, I felt the same way. Oh, come on now, Tony. If you may recall, my head was in this exact place back in the day, and not much has changed. And that's one of the reasons why I came straight to you when I read this letter. Uh-huh, I see. <laughs> Freedom fighter. <laughs> <laughs> so, are you sure you're ready for this young man? Yes, ma'am. I'm more than ready. Little Troy was the quietest kid in our whole school. If they can kill him, they can kill anybody. You or me. If we could just let them hear the letter, maybe it'll start a dialogue, or they just may just use some of his ideas. Oh, I can guarantee you it's going to start some dialogue. But getting them to vote and support it and take it to the next level is entirely something different. But if they really listen to what I have to say, it just might make that difference, Miss Sammy. All right. Okay. I can guarantee you that I can get you to present the letter without getting all into it. I'm gonna leave that up to you. Thank you, ma'am. But the fact that someone your age came up with a solution says a lot about the world that us adults has created, right? I, well, I must admit that sometimes it does take a child to raise a village. Hmm. You got that right. But if I'm not mistaken, there is going to be a people's, yep, people's input forum in the next day or so. Uh, where people, you know, it's open for discussion and taking suggestions. Are you guys available for that? Oh yeah, just give the word and we'll be there. All right, well, I will give you all a call a little bit later to confirm. Tony, it's good to see you. Just wish it was under different circumstances. Same here. And Jason, nice meeting you, young man. I wish there were more good young men like you out there. Thank you, ma'am. All right, here's your letter. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Guys, I don't mean to bother you, but I overheard what you were talking about in there. And I just wanted to tell you, man, you are one brave young man. Thank you. You know, I was sitting here and I'm thinking, man, listen, I created this campaign and a slogan called Unbreakable. And when I think about being unbreakable, that is exactly you. It would give me nothing but honor, man, to have you wear the shirt. Because you truly are the essence of what Unbreakable is. Thank you, sir. Nah, man, thank you. Thank you, thanks, man. I see you put on my mom's favorite hoodie. You better take it off before we get in the house. Okay, young man. As long as we got some running water, that's all that matters. And the toilet will be flush. <laughs> man, I'm so proud of you. Thanks, <laughs> Uncle T. If it wasn't for you, this wouldn't be happening. Yeah, man. Mama. That's Jason's grandma. She's not doing too well, but he's still able to focus on her and his letter. Okay. How did uh, the meeting go? Uh, tell her. <laughs> well, my mom. Well, Miss Sammy said they got a community meeting coming up. That she can set it up for me to read my letter to the council people, my mom. Okay. Well, now listen, baby. Just remember that what you're talking about doing, nobody's ever done before. And I know you want to do it, because your little heart is hurt. But that's why you got to listen to your uncle, because his mindset is the same as yours, as far as bringing about a change, you know what I mean? And so that's why he's going to help you get that letter ready, so you can talk to them their council people. I know, my mom. Yeah, well, you understand this too, that a whole lot of children, people been killed, by those same people that's supposed to help us and protect us. And nobody, I mean nobody, knows that better than your Uncle Tony to 
Terrell was his twin brother. He's the one that called the police when they came out and shot him. Now, nothing ever happened to that man. They didn't prosecute him. And what's worse is they sent him right back in this community. That's why I know that Uncle Tony, that he's going to help you to get that letter right. And that's why he asked his friend to help you. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Ooh. Praise be to glory. I believe the sun is going to shine again. No matter how bad things get, always remember that a change is going to come from somewhere eventually. And usually that change comes from a child, one way or another. And Jason, I believe you're going to be the child to make that change and be the vessel to make that change happen. God bless you, son. God bless you. You really think so, Mama? Oh, yes, I think so. Well, I'm going to go to my room, Mama. Tell me when dinner's ready. Where are you going so fast? I gotta go to my room and look over my letter. I want it to be perfect. Oh, that's my baby. Okay, go on, go on. Mm. 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 Hey, <laughs> where you been all day? Um, I, I ain't seen you all day. I just was with, I just was with Jason. With Jason? Where, you, where, honey? You just had a whole conversation with Jason. You don't, you don't remember that? You don't remember that? I don't know, son, but you know, it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. No. Don't worry. It's all right. Cause Jesus, he knows all about our troubles. He will fight till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. Just have faith, honey. It's gonna be all right. Everything is going to be all right. Don't you worry. It's going to be all right. I love you, honey. It's going to be all right. I love you too, Mama. Just help me, Jason. Okay. Just help me, Jason. That's Mr. Willie and two of his neighbors. He's always helping out people. He even gave away half of the money he was given by the city after being beaten really badly by the police. And they still continue to mess with him every chance they get. Yeah, Willie, I think his name is. He sued the city and the department for a beatdown we did back in 05. And he got a million dollars, huh? Yeah, hey, just about a million bucks. Ain't that something? These good guys getting their hands and knuckles all bruised up while dishing out justice. He gets rich, huh? Yeah, ain't that something? Boy, his family sure have been lucky. We're on two with those bastards. Well, hopefully our luck changes today, Maxie. Let's find out if he knows who his good old nephew Raheem is. Get on the elevator, y'all. Come on. Hey, listen, boy. Boy. Boy, you get on the elevator when I tell you 
Now tell both y'all to get on the elevator as well, too. We haven't done anything wrong. What's this all about? Why y'all harassing folks around here all the time for no reason? If I were you two, I would not say one more word. I don't listen to my partner here. Because I go to reach for his gun, and it falls out, one of y'all might get shot. Well, I see things are never going to change with you boys. It must feel really good to be an occupying force in a community that you don't even live in. Yeah, it does. Cause I'll tell you what. We still get paid, and you still have to live here. And we get to go home to our wives and kids in our nice little neighborhood. And guess what? You're always going to stay the bad guy, and we're always going to stay the good guy. You know, the sad thing is you actually believe that BS. Yeah, I do. You know why? Because this is your hellhole, not mine. Well, it's a hellhole it's because of the atmosphere that you good old boys have created for us to actually live here. You two girls really want to be charged with assaulting an hey, officer? Hey, hey, hey. Calm down here, Max. I may be inclined to forget what my partner said here. If you give up your nephew, Raheem. <laughs> you must be out to a cop and pick him out if you think I'm going to tell you where my nephew is. So you can try to frame him again for something he didn't do. Okay, now what then? You're under arrest. For what? For what? Yeah. For obstruction of an investigation. That's for what? Hey, Johnny, what's going on here, man? Hey, nothing, nothing. Uh, I'm just talking to my buddy here about obstruction of a piece of investigation. Nah, just get out of here. We're good. You realize we've been here the whole time, right? Today's your lucky day. But your lucky days are running out. We'll be around. We'll be looking for you, Willie. Let's get out of here. Man, you all right? Yeah, I'm good, Tom. I'm good. Man, if I didn't see this myself, I wouldn't believe it. That's part of the problem, Tom. You all got to see it to believe it. But now we're telling you that it's constantly happening every single day. Unprovoked harassment. But the real question is, Tom, what are you going to do about it? Well, you have a good day. You too, man. Be careful out there. That snow can be dangerous. Yeah, man. Come on. Let's get in the elevator. Come on. Jason is still concerned, but his uncle Tony is taking him to visit the place that's going to help take care of his grandma. Hi, welcome to Always Best Care. My name is Brian Clean. Jason. Jason? Hi, Tony. How you doing? Have a seat. So what brings you to Always Best Care? Well, my nephew is a little upset because he feels that we're going to take his grandmother to a nursing home. So I just wanted to bring him here so that you can explain exactly what you do. Well, my team specializes in in-home care. Always Best Care is an in-home care agency. We provide in-home care primarily to seniors with activities of daily living. So, you know, what exactly are you looking for? Are you looking for two hours or a living? Are you looking for seven days? Are you looking for five days? I think we'll start with two hours. Two hours? Two hours, just to kind of get, get, you know, her feet wet, just to see what it is that you guys do. If it, if it works, if it doesn't work, then at least we try it. You know, it's about, again, supporting the family so you guys can maintain your work-life balance. Okay. You know, we, again, we don't, you know, advocate anything but, but aging in place. Most people want to age in place. Most seniors want to age in place. So, Jason, does that make you feel better? Yeah. So you understand? Yeah. Do you have any questions that you want to ask? Are you sure you're going to take the best care of my mama. Wow, that's really good to hear that you have such a good interest in your grandmother. Grandmothers are great people, right? <laughs> yeah. So if you guys have any questions that you didn't ask today and you think of something, if you get home, certainly feel free to reach out to me. Okay. All right? Thanks, v Mr. Green. Very nice to meet you. you Thank you. Pleasure. Pleasure's all mine. <laughs> Take care. You too.
Fatima, do we have any more appointments? Hey, Lance. Sammy, you got a minute? Yeah, come on in, of course. Have a seat. Now listen, listen, listen. I really need you to do me a big favor. Well, I know you, and it depends on how big that favor is. Okay, listen, before you make your final decision, just hear me out, okay? Okay. Now, the mayor, he's been taking a lot of heat because of all these cop shootings. Yeah, just as he very well should. Okay, okay, I know how you feel about him, Sammy. But I need you to just attend these next few press conferences, and I just need you to stand next to the mayor. Just support him, just for pictures and stuff. That's it, nothing else. If you do me that favor, I'll be forever grateful, and then you can call in your favor anytime you want, no matter how you, no matter how you want it. Listen, Lance, the mayor has been standing on the sidelines about these shootings for years. I don't think it would be a good look for me to start supporting him now. Listen, 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 okay. The local residents, they've decided to start boycotting the downtown business. Really? That's right, because they're tired of them turning a blind eye to all these cop shootings, which is probably going to cripple this town. So the mayor has got to make a speech about it. And not in favor of or not in opposition of, he's just got to make a speech. And I just need you to just stand with him, stand next to him. You don't even have to make a statement. I just need you next to him, that's all. I, I just feel that uh, these boycotts, they're going to long overdue and they might do something positive for the community. But I tell you what, if you come to the city council meeting about uh, the community solutions and speak a couple of words on my behalf, I'll think about it. You think about it? Mm -hmm. Say a few words on your behalf? Mm -hmm. That's all I gotta do? That's so easy! See, you listen to me and I listen, listen, listen to you. I'm gonna see you Friday. No doubt. Let's get it. All right. Now I'm a happy man. That's what I'm talking about. That's all I'm talking about. Yes, Ms. Brooks? Yes. Get the mayor on the line for okay, me. Okay, right away, ma'am. Thanks. It seemed like every five minutes, someone was being harassed for one reason or another, no matter where we were in our community, even at our homes. Hey, any old boy, C. Raheem? We believe he hangs around on this block here. First of all, I don't see no boys out here. And who's Raheem? All I see is grown men. I don't know no Raheem. Ah, uh, a bunch of tough guys, huh? Nah, nah, I ain't no tough hey, guy. Yo, whatever, man. See, but I'm standing on my porch. What are you talking about? Waiting for my sister to come out the house, and this my family member. Listen, listen, you think it's smart to talk to an officer like that? Oh, Conduct an investigation hey, yo, around chill, here? Chill, chill. Uh, don't feed into this, man. You chill! Oh, Excuse me, officer. Don't nobody know Raheem. Can you please just leave us alone? Get out of here. I don't, I don't know yo, Raheem, tripping, man. man. Yo, chill, chill, chill. Please chill. Why are you out here? Why are they always doing this? Hey, 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 wait a minute. This, these are my We're kids. We're doing an investigation here. We're doing this, an investigation around here. Private property. Yo, yo. All right, all right. Hey. Instead of being a smart ass, you're talking out your chest. You understand? We're doing our job. It's time for you to go. All right, all right. Hey, 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 hey. All right, we're fine. You guys have a good night. All right, all right. I'm going to stay right back here. Thank you. Thank you. That's all right. We don't know right here. He doesn't live here, okay? That's all right. I'm not, I'm not. Calm down. Calm down. Okay. Mom's got this, all right?
Hey man, ain't you cold? No. Now you are an Eskimo, man. Look at all this snow. Come on in, it's open. I bet it'll be gone tomorrow, watch. <laughs> Hey. Hey. Just making some breakfast. Hey, how are you doing? All things considered, I'm good. How about you? I've been better. Yeah, I was just stopping by to let you know they're having a community meeting today to address those shootings. I heard. You know, it's funny, they don't promote this city meeting the way they promote the others. You know? The last thing they want is a room jam-packed full of angry residents. Yeah, I was just telling Hector the same exact thing. I mean, what else should we expect, right, from a city council that's been overlooking things like this forever? Which is the reason why I may not go inside the room with you, man. I mean, I'll go there with you, but I, I can't go inside that room. It's amazing that these politicians, they just refuse to work for the people that put them in office. Yeah. But I will say, the death of our son has galvanized a large portion of the white community, finally. Yeah, Troy, she's right about that. I mean, I'm seeing and hearing them say things I never thought I would ever hear them say when it comes to those police. Yeah, I've been, I've been getting a lot of public support from people who would have supported them, even if they shot a 90-year-old woman. It's great that people are starting to finally wake up. It just sucks that it had to be. because of the death of my son. Come on, man. Don't get me started. You know, I know I will go ballistic if I see these people that refuse to do anything, and I know we're only there because of the death of our child. Yes. Yeah, well, anyways, I figured you'd probably say that, but I just needed to come and ask still, you know? Thank you. I'm just not in the mood for any of that political BS today. Mm -hmm. Speaking of BS, you know my cousin Michael? He's on the city council. You know, you think he was born in the Hamptons, man, like with a silver spoon in his mouth, the way he looks down on the minority communities. He's been pretty much disowned by my entire family. And trust me, that's pretty hard to do in the Hispanic community. Well, whether any of them decide to do what's right or not, I feel like I need to be there, you know? So they can look me in my face when they just refuse to do what's right. We're gonna go ahead and get out of here and I'll give you a call later so that, you know, let you know how I went. Well, I'm sure I'll get the call from Sammy Brooks afterwards, you know? She said something about um, a little boy that was gonna speak at the event. What little boy? Didn't mention a name, but she definitely said that heads were gonna turn. So, I'll call you right afterwards, let you know how I went. Okay. Mm. Thanks. Well, it's good to see you, Hector. Please tell Pam I said hi. Same here, Maddie, and I, I sure will. Excuse me, Mr. Pratt, can you let me know when you're done with the kids so I can take them back to class? Okay. 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 Which one of you was causing the disturbance in your class? It was, it was her. It wasn't me. I wasn't even talking. Started talking first. It was first. you guys. It was all your guys. I shouldn't guys even fault. be here. I they shouldn't be here. This is you, you guys started fault. talking. No, Don't not. put me in it. It's all your fault anyway. It's okay. not my fault. Okay. Yes, it is. All right. That's it. Enough. I want you to go back to your class, and when your parents get here, we'll figure it out. Okay? Well. Bye. Hello. 
am I interrupting you? Not at all. I'm just waiting for a meeting, but they're late as usual. How can I help you? Well, I stopped in to see what time that you're heading over to City Hall for the community meeting today about the police shootings. That meeting's not till next Tuesday, I believe. No, the meeting is today. It's definitely today. I'm heading over there now with Miss Lawson. Wait a minute. I was specifically told that that meeting is not till this coming Tuesday. As a matter of fact, I reminded all the students to tell their parents to make sure they know the time and the date. Really? No, it's definitely today. And I bet I can guess who told you it's next week. I'm going to be calling Councilman Mendez as soon as I get a chance. That call is definitely in order. Indeed it is. But listen, this meeting usually goes a long time, but if there's any chance that it goes shorter, I will be straight over there as soon as I can. Okay. In the meantime, we're going to head on over, and if you don't make it over there, then I will let you know everything that went on. Please do. Okay, no problem. Thank you. I'll see you later. And good luck with that meeting, too. Thank you. Bye-bye. It was the day of the big community meeting. It was surprising, but really good to see that local residents of all races and nationalities were sick and tired of seeing these unarmed shootings. If we can't count on our city council members to protect our community, then who can we count on? Thank you for allowing me to speak today, <clears throat> but I want this on the record that I am not happy for what you people have done for this town. Did the last speaker show up yet? It's getting late. We understand your frustration, Mrs. Lawson, which is why we wanted all of the community leaders here today. I'm Lance Dunbar, yeah, another one of those city workers. So listen, Brad, I just want you to know that if Sammy is supporting this, then I'm all for it. I'm supporting also, and I just want that on record. That's it. Let's go. Good morning, Council, and thank you so much for taking this last minute add-on. I'm here today with Jason Key. He's a student of Marion Elementary School. Jason has a petition and, and letter for policy consideration that deals directly with this morning's issue of public safety. Jason, come on and share your letter. Okay, got it? Yep. All right, we'll take your time. Good morning distinguished council members, and thank you for allowing me to speak today. My name is Jason McKee. I'm 12 years old and I attend the sixth grade at Marion Elementary. My family has always lived here. My great grandparents have lived here through segregation and desegregation. But in the exact words of my grandmother, Ms. Hattie Mae McKee. While we marched and fought for inclusiveness, we never once stopped to think that it would give them more access to our children to fill up their courtrooms, jails, and prisons. We did not realize that while fighting for equality will come exploitation. She now says that her worst fears have been realized and that as black youth in America, we have become nothing more than moving targets and stock options in America's legal and criminal justice system. At the time, I did not fully understand the lesson she was trying to teach me. But today, I can clearly understand that my little brother, at six years old, is terrified of the police. I now understand why my uncles are filled with anger and yell hateful words at the TV when another black life is lost in a senseless, unarmed shooting. But what I do not understand is why a country as rich as ours 
with so much technology and diversity as ours, cannot find a simple solution to these unjustified killings. I now realize that they are more than aware of what's happening and they can find a solution, but are simply unwilling to enforce it. No one should have to live in fear of those who took an oath to serve and protect. But that is exactly what we live with each and every day in this community. It is both a known fact as well as a regular conversation that with most black or Hispanic police officers, we stand a good chance of being beaten, harassed, or sometimes falsely arrested. And the whole time, you under arrest. But at least we will eventually come home one day. But with each encounter with a white officer, the chances of being killed is automatically assumed at the very moment they reach eye contact. It's just a sad reality that we have come to accept. I'm not here today to ask for permanent segregation. I'm just here asking for consideration for new policies within the department, beginning with a temporary removal of all but the minority police officers until new training and vetting methods for racial biases are established. And lastly, a thorough re-evaluation of all the remaining officers. What I'm also proposing today is a policy revision to mandate that all new officers be recruited right in our own community. That all officers spend 80 hours per year within our community, taking parts in activities such as coaching sports teams, reading to kids at our library, helping elderly citizens do home repairs, and assisting local business owners. For the officers that failed to pass the simulation and sensitivity training, they should immediately be removed from the force as they are unable to serve in the best interests of our community. With help from my Uncle T, and Ms. Sammy, I have made a list of 80 community members that are willing to go through with the current academy and training I proposed. I also know this may seem to be pretty extreme, but drastic problems cause for drastic measures. It is my hope and prayer that the committee will thoroughly consider my proposal as a solution to the current police brutality that we endure day in and day out with the implementation of these policies, which will restore the community's faith and trust in its leaders. Thank you again, council members, for your time today. Council? So, Jason, you wrote this letter all on your own? Yes, sir. You sure there was no one who helped you write this letter? No, sir. We did it as a classroom assignment after the police killed the quietest kid in our whole school. He's talking about Troy James Jr. He's the most recent of the locals that were shot by law enforcement. Don't you mean killed by law enforcement, Lionel? Come on, Mary. You know exactly what I'm talking about. No, hey, I actually don't. All right, people. Enough. Not now. Uh, Jason, there's a lot of great ideas in this letter you wrote. What I hear is your primary solution to the shootings, to the killings, to the killings, agree? Is a removal of all the white officers that patrol the predominantly minority communities. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Come on, Sammy, you've got to be kidding me. Brad, when I, I first read Jason's letter, I was shocked. I reacted the same way. But it, it got me to thinking. And after that, I did a little bit of research, and I just want to present that to you. When I did the research, I saw that over in the past five years, there have been 38 deadly police shootings here. Then I dug further, and I saw within the past 10 years, only one black officer has even discharged his weapon, and that was just to wound a suspect. 
it's obvious who's doing the shootings here. So we just can't sit here and act like, you know, that, that something is above the fray. Numbers don't lie. Melvin, what, what did your office, you, your office did a study, what did your office find? Well, it showed that many of the law enforcement agencies across the country have been infiltrated by uh, numerous hate groups. Exactly. So we, you know, we can't sit here and act like, you know, our, our, our officers are above what, what he found. Okay, I agree. We can all accept that these numbers have been confirmed across the United States, but are you sure, do we know for a fact that our police force is falling into these statistics. Yes. Excuse me, excuse me. These, are, these numbers he just gave you are our local law enforcement. We've had 38 killings in the last five years, all by white police officers. I mean, come on, guys. I mean, do we really think this is something that we can pull off? Yes. It should. Do, does anybody else think this is crazy? Where, I mean, where are we going to get the funding to pull something like this off? Well, apparently, we can find the money for other things, such as building a new prison and uh, from what I hear they're going to complete that six months ahead of time thanks to some funding that was located. Judging by our history if it was something that we all agreed on we'd definitely be able to find the money to get it done. Come on seriously we're discussing this as if this is actually an option. <laughs> look 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 it, it might be Council, it might be a good idea for all of us to remember that this is about community safety. And if something is brought to us by any member of the community, no matter what it is or where it's from, we've all got to address that, no matter how old they are or who's presenting it. Well, even if we say yes to this, I mean, you imagine the kind of pushback we're going to get as we try to run this up the ladder? Well, I think we're about to find out who wants to stop these killings and who doesn't. Okay, counsel, I, I get it. Everyone has their opinion on this. But the fact of the matter is, is that people of this community have been complaining about police corruption for as long as I can remember. Now, many of those complaints have also been against black officers. But none of those complaints have involved actual tragedies, killings. Listen, I know you want to focus on that particular part of the letter, but there's something, there's something about Jason's letter that we've never heard or felt before. And I feel it could be very, very effective on, on this particular issue. Are we living in a twilight zone here? I mean, come on, guys. How crazy does this sound? I mean, do we really think this can work? Whether it does or it doesn't, I mean, it sure beats us just sitting around, not doing anything. But we need to do something about it. We this. all know where you stand. Furthermore, I... Now, Mikey and Kayla, when we get in this library, y'all better not be running around this place like y'all was just doing over there. It was her, Mommy. She played too much. Stop lying. You always act it up when we go out. I don't care who it was, but I'm not going to have y'all embarrassing me out here in this public no more today. And when we get in this library, y'all better sit down and pull out those phones and play one of those games while I go return this book. Now, come on. public present to you, you dismiss. But never when it comes to issues like corruption or excessive abuse of power. Um, newsflash people, this is, a, this is actually not true. What? Well, show me where any new form of legislation to address these issues has even been presented, yet alone passed. Well, there haven't been any in the last two years since I've been a member. Mr. Stanley, <laughs> you're a regular here. You're a fixture at these meetings. Quite frankly, I'd rather not hear the same thing. Okay, song. well, since we're talking about moving forward, you all need to agree on voting yes to what this young man has presented us to do in his letter. Hi. 
Hi, how are you? I'm doing good. I want to return my book. Great. Is it late? I think so. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. Oh my goodness, Mikey. I left the book in the car. It's in between the seat and the armrest. Oh, uh, okay. Can you hold my phone? Well, listen, when he comes back with the book, we'll take good care of you, okay? Oh, thank you so You're much. You're welcome. Thank you. So what you doing on that phone, Kayla? Playing games. Now, I don't care how crazy it may sound to you, but we need to do something about this today. Yes. Yes. As a matter of fact, the more I think about it, this very well might be the best idea to stop all these killings. Yeah. 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 Sammy, I don't, I think this is gonna be a really hard sell. Brad, if you just take a moment to just open your mind and, um, Brad, um, would, would it be okay if, uh, uh, counsel, um, would it be okay if Mr. James uh, said a word? Okay, Mr. James. You may speak, but keep it brief. We're, we're running short of time now. Uh, all right, as you all know, my son, Troy Jr., was the, the little boy that was recently killed here in our town. So, it irritates me that you guys are hesitating to Jason's letter. Do you not see the problem here? I see it. They see it. Yes. Yes. We can't keep going on like this. We can't, Jason, my, my son was 12 years old. He was a boy, he didn't pose a threat to anybody. I don't understand why you're not getting behind this kid's letter. This kid was the same age as my son. It is the same age my son was. And he came up with a solution that none of you are thinking about. And I, I just don't understand why I, I want you all to understand something. This is not a video game where you can kill someone and they get back up and you start over again. This is not a movie where you see someone die and then watch, turn the channel and they're on another channel and another project. This, this is real life. Those kids aren't coming back. My son is not coming back. There's nothing I can do about that. You guys are the city government leaders of this town. The power's in your hands. You can do something about it. If y'all really the leaders of this town, it's time for you to lead. Another day in paradise, huh, Zimmerman? Yo, whoa, stop, stop. Back up, back up. You see that? Yo, you see that? I think that kid's trying to break in that car. Yeah, let's, let, let's Yo, go get up, get up, get up, get up, do it. Mr. James, thank you very much for your heartfelt words. And we uh, all feel sorry for your loss. Now, Sammy, you're aware from your involvement how long we've been looking for a solution to this problem. And no one wants a solution to this problem more than this council. But I'm sorry, this is something that I can't support right now. Not at this time. Out of all the people here in the city government, uh, I really thought this, that this was something that you would be happy to get behind, Brad. You yourself. Absolutely. Not too long ago. You... I don't know, 
just came. How'd you leave the book in the car again? I don't know. I must have been rushing. Max! Max! I think it's done! Communities. Stay seated, please. There's nothing to see, folks. Stay seated. Be safe. Stay inside. Do not leave the room. Stay back. Stay. Max! I thought he had a gun! Max! I thought he had a gun! It's all right. Stay back! See you! No! As you all know, I have been city manager for a very long time. And there have been a lot of ideas and suggestions that have been voiced in this very room over the years. But there is nothing that can be said here today by those of us who claim to even have the smallest amount of decency. For us to know that it is within our power to bring about change and difference in the lives of those who have entrusted us to do just that. There should even be one moment of pause in making this choice, especially after what we've witnessed today and for years in our community. So to you, distinguished members of our city council, I'm sure you all know, as well as I do, that there is nothing more that can or needs to be said. So the question has to be asked. All in favor of moving forward in support of the provisions outlined in Jason's letter. Please, raise your hand now. I can't explain why, but seeing my body laying there on that ground as my spirit floats away feels strange, but not in a bad way. I guess it's because I know the good that's going to come as a result of my death. All of those things in Jason's letter 
would never have seen the light of day if I had not been gunned down that cold snowy day. I'm not sad. It's actually really peaceful. And who knows? I might come back as a hummingbird or something. Try to run, I call out. 